There's a time in our lives where we experienced pure terror. A time where we felt hopeless. A time we wished never existed. I remember that time. I wished it never happened. I relive that horrible moment every night in my dreams. People around me wished to know what happened that day. Well, a few years ago, I went to Africa as part of a trip. I was traveling alone on foot. I got lost, and I was away from civilization. I was stuck in the middle of the forest. I was looking at my map, and I found some train tracks. I figured that if I followed them, I'd be closer to the nearest town. I stood next to the tracks, and I began to walk. Hours passed, and my feet were starting to hurt really badly. The sun was starting to set, and everything was getting dark. I wanted to stop, but I kept going. Finally, I found an old cabin next to the tracks. Its front wall was missing, and there were a few people inside. I noticed they were all Asian. There were many tables, and some were drinking beer while others were eating food. The cabin was also poorly lit in some areas. It was hard to see the back of the room, but I could see that there was a hallway. There was a sign next to the hallway, but it was written in a foreign language. I entered the cabin, and the people didn't seem fazed by my sudden appearance. I don't drink beer, but I was hungry as hell. I asked the bartender for food. He gave me some bread and some water. It wasn't much, but I didn't care. I then asked him where the next town was. The next town is 30 miles from here, he said. Shit, I said. That means I have to stay here until tomorrow. Afraid so. I hate to ask this, but where do you guys come from? Not Korea, my friend. At this point, I felt uneasy. The bartender continued. We are here for a mission. Mission, I asked? What mission? I can't tell you that, he explained. It's a secret. I decided not to talk to him anymore. I feared that if I kept talking, he would shoot me. I left the stool, and that's when I noticed the door at the end of the hallway. I moved myself towards it. The others watched as I reached for the doorknob. However, I stopped myself. A horrible stench was rising beneath the door. It was the worst smell I have ever experienced in my life. I decided to back off. Was that your secret? Whatever it was, it smelled awful. Since there were no walls in front of the cabin, some men were putting up a tarp in front of it. Meanwhile, I sat near a table, and I decided to rest there. When I woke up, the tarp was gone, and some men were eating a bowl of cereal and milk. I noticed something outside. There was a five-year-old black kid on the tracks. I got up and I went to check on him. What was a kid doing on the tracks? Why didn't the other men notice that? Just then, I heard the worst noise possible. A whistle. A train's whistle. I ran towards the kid and I saw the train coming. The kid looked at me and said, Daddy wants me here. I got the kid off the tracks, just mere seconds before the train passed by. The train came by at a fast rate. Had I not noticed him, he would have been killed. I turned to face the bartender. He looked angry. Very angry. The bartender looked at me and said, his dad will be here in a few minutes. To be honest, I was angry too. I hope the bartender does something about him. Two guys told me to take a seat, and I did so. Without warning, they held me down by the shoulders. I was never a strong guy, and they held me down easily. There was no way I could fight them off. Why were they doing this? Just then... A Korean man with a wheelbarrow arrived. That must be his dad, I thought. His wheelbarrow contained nothing but sharp rocks. He tilts it and dumps the rocks on the ground. The kid was happy to see him. The dad wasn't. 
He began yelling at him in his native language. He pointed at the tracks the kid was on moments ago. Without warning, he grabbed the kids by his legs and he smacked the kid's head against the sharp rocks. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The man proceeded to hit him against the rocks again and again. He couldn't stop. The kid kept crying. He bled everywhere. I, I tried to stop him, but the guys prevented me from doing so. Worse still, the men around me didn't stop him. They just stood there and watched. Even the bartender was watching. Finally, the man stopped. The kid was lying in a pool of blood. He picked him up by the legs and proceeded towards the cabin. I saw in the kid's eyes that he was still alive, but just barely. He went towards the back. The guys were still holding me down as the father opened the door in the hallway. I heard him throw the kid into the room and he slammed the door shut. He then left the cabin and entered the forest. Shortly after, the guys finally let go of my shoulders. I had to save the kid. I knew there was still a chance I could save him. The men didn't stop me as I ran for the door. I opened it and I flicked on the light switch. There he was, lying there motionless in his blood. It was clearly too late. The kid had died. Lying next to him was another lifeless child. And another... And another...